Art is reality for Vivek Shraya and it's beautifully fueled her journey of transition. Let's hear her inspiring story of triumph and self-expression. Vivek, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks yes, for having me. Thank you. There's so much I want to talk to you about. And I want to Let's start talk off. about everything. Yes, your art. Um, you, in uh, various different phases that I've, I've spoken to in the past, um, releasing music, uh, writing short novels, God Loves Hair is the first one that I came across. She of the Mountains, just releasing a brand new book of poetry called Even This Page is White. And now leading up to your very beautiful um, uh, experience of transition. Would you say all the different art forms that you have been a part of and you've used to express yourself has helped negotiate your identity up to this point? For, for sure. I think that um, the beautiful thing about making art is sometimes it's easier to reveal your truth in your art. And I think the more that I have been able to do that, my art is constantly challenging me and pushing me to be my whole self. Mm -hmm. And so describe um, how you've come to this process of fruition, really, in your, in your experience of transition. Um, I mean, when I heard... It's a loaded question. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> how do you answer that in, like, yeah. a minute? Um, you know, transness is something that, like, I felt... Uh, like the boat, the ship had passed. You know, when I heard about transness, I was, you know, in my 20s, uh, my early 20s, and I, I often wondered, and I've, I've constantly said this, I wonder what my life would have been like had I known about transness as an option when I was younger. Um, but, you know, I'm not dead. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's it's been interesting to sort of, I think that like two or three years ago, I'd sort of reached peak masculinity. You know, I was very like, buff I was like eating my chicken breasts and my protein and I had my beard and it still didn't feel like me mm. you know it didn't feel like my truth it is certainly a part of me but masculinity always felt like a performance for me I always felt like I had to carry myself a certain way and lower my voice when the phone rang and I didn't I, it, it was exhausting mm -hmm. it was exhausting so it's been a journey I would say in the past couple of years to really reclaim my femininity like the femininity that was you know bullied out of me and that I sort of I also had to destroy for safety which you know I think you can you can relate to yes, so absolutely. for me uh, yeah it's been really exciting to allow you know my feminine self to live again and 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 yeah. Yeah. Now that moment that you've you faced um, that question of masculinity being a performance and now fully embracing your femininity and acknowledging why that femininity wasn't present um, in its fullest extent in the mm -hmm. years past, what was that moment like for you as a person? Because it's traumatic. It takes you back to a lot of very difficult experiences. I mean, honestly, Daniel, it wasn't one moment, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it was very innocuous. Like... I started um, wearing nail polish mm -hmm. and then I started wearing leggings. I think sometimes we think that like there's like an aha moment like one of the questions I get a lot asked a lot especially with my artists like when did you know you were queer and I don't think that there was like a specific moment mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with trans totally where I think yeah. there was these sort of innocuous gestures and I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and revealing more and more, like undoing a lot of that hurt um, and trauma, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I'm still uncovering, still discovering. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a process. It's, it's a, a process. journey. It's a process. I yeah. think people think that gender is like a stable category that you and sexuality, right? That you you get to gayness and that's it, or you get to, you know, whatever your gender is and, and that's who you are, especially with transition. There's an idea of a beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. And for me, who knows where I'll end up in the next two years when we yeah. talk on, on our sequel. Yeah, it, it's a very... Uh, I love that sequel. <laughs> uh, it's it, Identity and, you know, sexual negotiation, it's... it's you're constantly negotiating that throughout your entire life, yeah. you know? And every time I know in my experience, when I tell someone I'm gay, it's like coming out all over again. Exactly. And so that keeps that process going. But how was, now that you're in transition, how has society been to you? How difficult, how challenging has it been for you? Um, has it even been challenging for you when it comes to family and friends and um, having the world now acknowledge and embrace your new identity? I think that I've been very fortunate that you know, most people are trying really hard to use she and her as pronouns. Yes. My brother and his girlfriend practice at home. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from the work of, you know, 
hundreds and thousands of trans activists that have come before me who have fought for, for trans people like me in my generation or at this moment to be able to have our, our genders recognized and respected. So I feel very fortunate in that respect. I think the, the challenging part for me is, you know, negotiating how... Um, negotiating safety, a eh? you yeah. know, like even like walking here, I went to the wrong address, and just like you know, not making eye contact. And even though I was like, I was thinking about this, I'm like, I'm technically in the gay village, I'm in Toronto, I should be safe. But like you know, I've had people call me tranny here, like uh-huh. you know, like and you know, throw things. So it's it's that stuff that I don't think will ever change. Is like negotiating, or I mean, hopefully it will change, but. You know, as as we are seeing in, in Orlando, like, you know, safety uh, for LGBTQ people is is always um, is always in question. Yeah, always. Now, your your transition to me was beautifully captured in that photo series you created called Trisha. Tell me what inspired that and why you chose to express yourself in that manner, because it was beautiful photos you. of your mom before she was married mm-hmm. and you sort of embodying that image and mm-hmm. creating a, a recreation of yourself in the same look and feel. Tell me about that. So two years ago, I made a short film called Holy Mother, My Mother, which yes. was w- with my mom in it. And um, I've been touring that film for the past two years since it was out. And every time I tour it, I show this particular image of my mom, which is actually in the series, but, um, in Trisha. It's her in this green sari. Yeah. And she's, you know, giving her smiles and doing that. And it's been odd as I've been transitioning to look at that photo and be like, wow, like I've really our resemblance is really uncanny and like I I my mom has always been a huge inspiration for me and my gender I remember as a kid like watching her while she got ready and you know just everything about her her transformation you know from being like home mom to like glamorous you know Indian um, party uh, like woman you yeah. know <laughs> uh, very like magical you know like she had this toolkit from Canadian Tire that she refurbished as like a jewelry case where it was like color coded and like her green earrings went here her green necklaces went here and so I've always <laughs> I been know this, yeah. yeah so I've always been so inspired by my mom and I think you know subconsciously I have uh, so much of my gender has been um informed by my mom and so when seeing that photo and thinking like wow I I look so much like her here I I thought why not why not create a photo series that explores that so I went through all these photos um that my mom had sent um and um yes just selected a, a range of photos that I wanted to capture a range of different emotions and settings and feels and then um we spent a day and we shot we reshot it all nine nine photos yeah and what was your mom's reaction to these photos I haven't actually shared the project with my mom yet yes. um part of the challenge with my mom is she's such a private person even the fact that she did a film with me is like shocking you know she's she's very private and she wouldn't like her photos being on the internet like that's anytime we're like let's take a selfie she's like where are you going to put this? Don't post this on the internet. So it's kind of like don't ask, don't tell. Like I feel like if I tell my mom, then she'll say take them off the internet and then I'll have to listen. So this way I'm like, mm. <laughs> I would like to share it with her at some yes. point. But yeah, I'm also just taking baby steps with, with my family in, yeah. in, really, in regards to my gender. Mm-hmm. And so um, talk to me about even this page is white because I thought it was such a, a poignant piece in your literary career of all the, the pieces that you've written in the past. It packed in such a social and a political message and I think that it ties so well with the experience of your transition and who you're becoming now so tell me about that I really wanted to create something that addressed racism especially systemic racism again living in a city like Toronto I think people have this idea you know you take the TTC more than half the people on the TTC are as brown mm-hmm. you know racism doesn't exist here similar stuff that we hear about homophobia right that yeah. like, homophobia doesn't exist in Toronto but I especially navigating the arts various different art sectors whether it's the music industry, the publishing industry, I, I see systemic racism all the time and I'm part of, um, I'm, I'm treated a certain way because of being brown and so I wanted to write a project, I wanted to make a project that really addressed that um, and so I turned to poetry as a medium uh, because there's something about poetry where you can be very raw and you can be very direct and um, 
in the medium, and I felt like that's what I needed in as a way to talk about racism. Where do you see all of your life's experiences and all your artwork taking you, if you can foresee that future? And what do you want people to learn from your experience? Loaded. You're asking the hard <laughs> questions. Um, I mean, I don't generally believe in destiny as a con like as a concept um, mm -hmm. but I do think especially looking back at my body of work I think that my artistic purpose is to complicate dominant narratives and so I love that you know what does queer lo queerness look like in the mainstream how do I do uh, how do I complicate that what does you know race look like in the mainstream how do I complicate that how do I complicate what people's ideas are of religion of family of gender so I, I hope that I can continue to make art, um, A, first and foremost, and B, that it, it always is complicated and that it, uh, you know, connects with other people and um, has a range of, uh, elicits a range of response from other people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I wish you so much luck in oh, your God. journey. Oh, God. Thanks for having and me. And I can't wait to see everything else that you create. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for all thank your support you. over the years. It really means a lot. Everyone, thanks for joining me on Date with Daniel. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel to stay in the loop for more quirky, fun, and insightful chats.